How are you guys? Uh, look, I'd just like to ask about the ASIC forum that occurred on the, the weekend. I know that the ticket prices for the forum were more than $2,000 a ticket. Uh, do you think it's appropriate that ASIC, uh, ASIC is giving access to the big end of town to its senior leadership at a price point which is inaccessible to mum and dad retail investors? Well, it's not a, it's not a laughing matter. It's very difficult no, it's not, to get access. It's not a laughing matter at all. Access. The, um, the forum was attended by a wide range of people uh, and uh, the uh, we can't pay for that. So people were given an opportunity to attend the forum. It got a lot of support from across the market, from consumer groups, industry, a whole range of people were there. Uh, a whole range of topics were um, explored. Uh, speakers didn't charge for their time. Uh, so they didn't charge for their time, why have you charged so yeah, much? Because uh, people were fed and they, uh, there was a dinner. Uh, and there was a range of other expenses associated with putting on a forum. Uh, but I um, didn't expect to be questioned about this actually, so I'm going to ask Warren Day whether there's anything more we can add to assist your concern. Oh, that's all right. I've got another question he can answer. Okay. Are events such as uh, the forum uh, on the weekend an opportunity for senior leadership in ASIC to be captured by the big end of town? Well, it wasn't on the weekend. It was actually last Thursday, Friday. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. It's a very public event. It's very transparent. Um, to my mind, it's an excellent example of ASIC engaging with all sectors of the community and industry. Um, the representatives of the media were there. The assistant treasurer gave a keynote speech. Um, far from uh, regulatory capture, I would put it the other way around. I think it's a, a, a fantastic example of ASIC engaging with the general community, of listening to their concerns, of us being very open with the issues that we think are important. So climate change, crypto, superannuation, a whole range of subjects were explored in a very public, thoughtful manner. Uh, so I'm very proud okay. of the so ASIC you, forum, so absolutely you, proud of it. Did you discuss scalping on the stock market by high frequency traders? Was that raised at all? Uh, that wasn't raised because it wasn't on the agenda. Right, yeah, because that's a big issue with small investors. Mm. Um, so I'll lead on to the next question. I noticed that uh, on the 28th of October this year, ASIC uh, issued a press release stating that they found material, uh, a material deterioration of audit quality in the past 12 months. Uh, has ASIC considered whether companies are engaging and remunerating auditors, auditors appropriately given the size and scope of the company? I'm going to ask Commissioner Hughes to look at that. Thank you. Good afternoon, Senator. So the audit quality report which we issued in October followed on from the um, audit file quality reviews that we've been performing for some years now. That does not involve as part of its scope the cost associated with the audit program and indeed it focuses on the key risk areas that we identify in advance based on prior surveillance, financial reporting surveillance which happens real time throughout the course of the year. Um, the question of, of how much uh, companies pay their auditors uh, for the performance of the audit is not something that's within ASIC's remit. That is a commercial decision for the company to make and for the shareholders to approve as part of their ordinary corporate governance role. We don't, we're not a price regulator. Right, okay, thank you. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.